Um, hi, everyone. My name is Pauline de Guzman. I am the Assistant Director of International Student Services here at ISEO. I'd like to thank my colleagues, Carice Fuller, for helping plan um, this session, and also to my colleague, Argeria William Hayward, who will um, be answering any questions you might have via chat today um, as I'm presenting. And um, if you do have any questions after the session, we're happy to connect with you on a one-on-one -on -one session. So uh, please note that is an option. Let's go ahead to the next slide here. Just for viewers who are watching this recording after um, this session, do, do note that um, this information is for general and for purposes only, and it's not intended to be legal advice. Um, each student might have a different timeline. Um, and so these, dates here that we represent during our presentation are subject to change and may vary per student. All right, next slide, please. All right, so today we will talk about your grace period. Um, after a student completes their program, they have a specific period of time to take action, to either um, understand next steps, stay in the U.S., or maybe depart. We'll talk about what those options are today. There are various options. However, we will be only we will only be highlighting um, the following three. So departing the U.S., working in the U.S. through OPT, or Optional Practical Training, or perhaps if you are planning to start a graduate program at a different school or maybe here at UC San Diego, we'll, stop, we'll talk about that option as well. And then we'll open it up for any questions you might have. Next slide, please. So first let's talk about your timeline. Um, it is important to understand your grace period in order to understand what dates and what federal guidelines and regulations might determine when you need to take action. Next slide, please. So here we have, I won't read this out loud, but we have the federal regulations outlining when a student's grace period begins. Um, the grace period is a period after your program completes to either prepare for departure or take additional steps to remain in the U.S. Um, lawfully. The grace period is not on your Form I-20. So it takes a bit of thinking to understand when your specific grace period may begin. For students, the grace period begins the day after one of the following dates below, whichever is later. So we have your last date of uh, enrollment in your final quarter. Um, it could be your last day of on-campus employment in your final quarter, or if you're a graduate student and you have a comprehensive exam or defense date in your final quarter, it could also be that date. It will just depend on which of the three is later. Next slide, please. Okay, so here we have an illustration of when a student's grace period may begin. Um, for, exam for example, let's assume a student's last term of enrollment is spring 24, and that term will end on June 14th of 2024, as shown here um, on this timeline. Let's assume the student has no on-campus employment, they're not TAing or anything in their final quarter. They also are an undergraduate student, perhaps, so they have no comprehensive exam and no defense dates. In this situation, the last date would be June 14th. So a student's grace period would follow the day after, and their grace period would be June 15th, 2024 through August 12th of 2024. So you can see this would be a student's 60-day grace period. Next slide, please. So as another example, let's assume um, the same student might have um, a a comprehensive exam, or maybe they will have a um, an on-campus employment position such as a TA, where they are grading papers and maybe need to work a little bit after um, that quarter end date. Uh, next, uh, would you click, RG? Thank you. So here we can see a student's comprehensive exam date of May 12th. Their last date of enrollment in spring quarter might be June 14th, and they are a TA, so they're helping to grade papers and so forth um, all the way through June 24th, so right after finals exam. Um, this is a very common situation for our graduate students who might need to um, work past the, the quarter end date, very common. Uh, click please, RG. 
So we can see here for this example that the student's grace period of the three days, right, on campus employment is actually the later date. So the grace period would be June 25th, the day after last day of on campus employment. And then it goes 60 days all through August 23rd. Um, so as the two slides have just illustrated, a student's grace period will depend on which of these three dates might be later for them. Each student is different. Each um, student's grace period may vary. So really important to understand this concept of when your grace period might begin. Next slide, please. A very common question we receive is, well, my, my program end date on my I-20 is far in the future, it's in 2027. Does that mean I, you know, I have additional time? Unfortunately, no. Students who have a program end date in the future should not assume that they have additional time to stay in the U.S. Your grace period automatically begins um, after one of those three dates that we've discussed earlier, and ISCO will automatically shorten your I-20 to reflect your actual program end date. This is just an estimated program end date of when we think you might complete your program. It's common students complete a bit earlier. Um, and so it's important to understand that concept. All right. So let's talk about what you can and cannot do during this grace period. During your 60 day grace period, you can definitely plan to depart the US or you can prepare to depart. Uh, so this might include packing your belongings, um, you know, selling a car, whatever it might be. You can also travel within the U.S. So many of you and your um, close friends and that you've made here uh, during your program, you might decide to take a road trip within the U.S. Travel within the United States is perfectly fine during your grace period. Okay. You can also submit applications to continue to maintain your F1 status and stay in the US. So that's what we'll talk about today, applying for working and, or applying to um, start a new program in the US. Some points about what you cannot do during your grace period. You cannot work. Uh, you may not engage in any kind of employment. This includes unpaid or volunteer opportunities or continuing any kind of on-campus position that you might hold um, unless you have received approval for OPT. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment. You may also um, not leave the US during the grace period and come back using your current I-20 unless you've taken steps to maintain your status, again, which we'll talk about um, in a moment here. So really understanding what you cannot do, um, what you can do during your grace period now that you've determined when that grace period, when those 60 days might be. Next slide, please. All right. So during your 60 day grace period, here are the options that you may take. Uh, we, number one, you can plan to just depart the US so you can leave the US, you may not re-enter. The second, um, likely our most common, is students will apply or begin working. So this is post-completion optional practical training or OPT. Um, Another common option, another common um, option or route that students take is they're going to start a new program. They might start a new program, let's say a graduate program at a different school. So they might transfer out their CVIS record or their I-20 from UC San Diego to another school, or they might have been accepted into a graduate program here at UC San Diego. So they will be required to apply for an update to their Form I-20 known as a change of degree level. Students do also have the option to change their, <clears throat> excuse me, visa status. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, however, that's not something we'll be discussing today. If you do have questions about this option, um, you are welcome to connect with one of our advisors and we can discuss it in more detail. Next slide, please. Okay, so we will be talking about graduation, working after graduation, and this is um, applying for post-completion OPT. Next slide, please. While we will not discuss OPT in great detail today, um, the information provided is meant to give you an understanding of your timeline. When might you want to apply? Um, how does it impact your plans for travel? And so forth. So for those of you who have not done um, research or have not heard of optional practical training, 
known as OPT. OPT is a type of employment authorization for F1 students after their program of study. So OPT is not something that um, we recommend usually for students during their program. It is going to be a period after you've completed your program. It's an opportunity to pursue up to 12 months of work experience in your major field of study. Opportunities through OPT can be a volunteer paid or unpaid positions. It can be on campus or off campus, as long as it is related to your program of study. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so um, OPT, it's important to understand, this is a common question we get, OPT is not some sort of work visa. It's actually a part of your F1 program. So you will still be maintaining your F1 status while on OPT. You can think of your F1 um, program in the U.S., in two parts. The first part is when you are enrolled in classes. And these dates are reflected on the first page of your Form I-20. So you'll see your program start date and your program end date. When you decide to apply for OPT and stay in the U.S. work, um, on the second page of your I-20, you will see the second part of your F-1 program. This is known as your practical training portion where you can now apply everything you've learned in the first part of your F1 program while you are enrolled uh, to a practical job opportunity um, or internship after you've graduated. So on the second page of your I-20, we will then update um, a recommended time frame for when you can engage in OPT. There are eligibility requirements for for applying for OPT, and you can learn more about that by visiting our OPT website. You need to be physically located in the U.S. at the time of applying. This is a big um, point to make just because many students who leave during the grace period um, have intention to apply for OPT, but don't understand they cannot re-enter the U.S. during their grace period in order to apply. So for students who are planning to work during um, their, after their program, it's important that you plan for travel as well when it comes to applying for OPT. The great thing is you don't need a job to apply for OPT. Uh, you just need to submit an application to U.S. Immigration um, asking for permission to accept employment, um, and you do have some period of time to look for a job. And we'll go over that and what that timeline might look like. Approval for OPT is um, done by U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, or USCIS. So ISCO will recommend a student for OPT by adding information on the second page of the I-20, but the final approval does come from USCIS. So um, we'll talk about what their application timeline looks like as well so that you're aware. When a student is approved for the OPT, they will receive a document from USCIS known as an EAD card or employment authorization document. Next slide, please. These are general steps. Again, we're not going to talk about the app OPT application in detail, uh, but we'll be referencing these, these stages um, as we talk about our timeline, so it's important to understand. Um, I do also want to uh, put in a plug for our OPT information sessions. So um, we have in-person information sessions on how to apply for OPT, how to understand your timeline in great detail. And I'll ask Argeria to add that link for our OPT info sessions in the chat if you'd like to attend one in person and connect with our team. There are four stages for applying for OPT. We'll talk about um, each of these stages through, through our timeline, but it is important that you understand where your um, grace period lies when you are applying for each of these stages. So stage one is you need to request an OPT I-20 from iPortal. This might take about two weeks for us to issue. Um, in this first stage, we will ask you for details determining your program end date. So we will ask you for those three dates we mentioned earlier. When is your last date of enrollment? When is your last date of on-campus employment? Or when is your comprehensive exam date? Of those three dates, we will actually shorten your Form I-20 to reflect the true end date. 
In addition, during stage one, we will be asking you for a requested OPT start date. So when would you like to ideally start your OPT? This start date must be within your 60-day grace period. So again, for students graduating on June 14th, last date of enrollment, June 15th um, might be the earliest date you can request for an, an ideal OPT start date. Okay, and then I think August 12th was the latest OPT start date you could choose. So this is stage one. We'll be issuing you an OPTI 20 reflecting an updated program end date in addition to your uh, requested OPT start date. Now that you have an OPTI 20, you will then need to submit the OPTI 20 in addition to additional documents to USCIS. They have an online portal in which you can submit your application. We won't go too much into detail about that timeline today. Um, but once you submit that application, then there is a specific processing time in place. Once you submit the application, you move on to stage three. Uh, this is the longest stage because you're just waiting. USCIS, once you've submitted your application in stage two, it might take them anywhere from 90 to 120 days um, to approve your application. There is an option for premium processing. So if you do want your application processed earlier than 120 days, um, then it could be worthwhile to go ahead and submit an application for premium processing. After the approval process, which is 90 to 120 days, as I've mentioned, USCIS will then in stage four, approve your application issue you an employment authorization document or EAD card, and then you can begin working. Again, to learn more about this process, please come to one of our OPT information sessions or visit opt.ucsd.edu for uh, a detailed look at each of these stages. Next slide, please. Okay, so Adria, there's a quite a bit of clicking um, in this next <laughs> few slides. And so I'll just say click and hopefully that helps us to move and illustrate this along. Um, in order to understand your timeline for when you can apply for OPT, you need to understand based on your program end date, right? So which of those three dates are the uh, um, reflect the start of your your grace period, you need to understand that you can apply for OPT no earlier than 90 days before that program end date and no later than 60 days after your program end date. Let's click, please. So here's 90 days. Um, if you are graduating and your program end date is June 14th, then the earliest date you can apply for OPT would be March 16th. And click, please. And the latest date would be August 12th. Click, please. So this is known as your five-month OPT application window. You can apply for OPT anytime between this five-month window. Note that if your program end date changes, so does your five-month window, right? So once, um, if a student's program end date reflects their last date of on-campus employment. So in our earlier example, I think it was June 24th, then that student's five month window will also shift quite a bit to be 90 days before June 24th and then 60 days after. I mentioned earlier in stage one that you also need to request a possible OPT start date. This does not mean that US, USCIS will honor the start date that you request. Um, so this is just a start date that you hope to receive approval and hope to start working by. All right. Again, that start date that you choose can be anywhere in between your 60 day grace period. So June 15th would be the earliest start date you can choose. August 12th would be the latest. Next slide, please. Okay, so we discussed um, your five month window. Now, USCIS has provided an estimate of about 90 to 120 days to review and provide a decision on your application. The green arrow here determines or illustrates uh, the processing time for USCIS. It's important to note that USCIS will never provide you with a start date in the past. 
Um, also, you may not receive your requested OPT start date. So if you apply for OPT when the um, green kind of um, timeline there illustrates, if you apply as early as 90 days prior, so March 16, you might hear a decision from U.S. Immigration um, within 90 days, right? So sometime around June 14th. Let's say you chose a OPT requested start date of July 2nd. So that represents the yellow heart here. If you applied early enough on March 16th, you received a decision on June 14th, it is more than likely that you will um, USCIS will approve your requested OPT start date of July 2nd, so that yellow heart. Okay, click please. Click please. All right, so let's say you're not quite sure yet if you want to apply for OPT. You don't apply until around May 1st or so. So again, where this green um, line here illustrates the approval or the processing time of USCIS at 90 days. So let's say on May 1st, you decide to apply for OPT. All of May, all of June, all of July, maybe on August 1st, you might hear from a, deci a, deci a decision from USCIS. So let's assume you've still uh, um, chosen a start date of July 2nd, which is represented by the yellow heart here. We know that USCIS will not provide us a start date in the past. So when they make a decision on our application on August 1st, August 1st will likely be your OPT approved start date. So this is a really important concept for students to understand that choosing that possible requested OPT start date it is something that you will likely obtain if you apply early enough. However, students who are applying um you know with very close to their their requested OPT start date may not receive that start date and may receive a later start date depending on USCIS's processing time. Now, there is an application for premium processing, which does allow students to pay a um, quite an quite a high fee. I think it's um, around sixteen or seventeen hundred dollars in addition to the OPT application fee. And if you are willing to pay this premium processing fee, they are guaranteeing a decision within thirty business days. This still does mean about six weeks. So instead of three months here, you might be looking at a month and a half um, or again, six weeks. So students who are applying for OPT now and have a OPT requested start date or they have an employer already who is hoping to and they're hoping to begin employment, um, I would rec recommend premium processing in, in some of those cases. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. Another concept as we approach the end of the spring quarter um, is how far and how much time USCIS will approve OPT for. So USCIS can approve OPT up to 12 months, um, but it cannot exceed more than 14 months from your program end date. So in this example here, um, a student will request a their OPT let's say after they've graduated. So let's just say July 1st or so, they might request their OPT represented by the green, um, again, green line here. Then on July 1st, it will likely take 90 days and they might not receive a decision <clears throat> until October 1st, all right? USCIS will then approve the application with an October 1st start date. However, since the OPT end date cannot exceed 14 months from your program end date of June 14th, the latest possible end date you can receive for OPT will remain August 12th, 2025. So you can see here for students in this situation who apply for the OPT quite late um, <clears throat> within their five month window, they will actually lose time. They will not receive a full 12 months of OPT. You can see this student will only will only receive about 10 um, in, a, in a half months or so. Okay, so really important to understand when you apply, 
how long USCIS may take to review your application and when you are likely to begin or to receive approval to actually begin working. These are, <clears throat> excuse me, important conversations to have with your prospective employer around when you might receive a decision and when you can actually start employment. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, a common question that we receive from students is around travel. Um, and so let's go to the next slide, Argeria, and let's talk a little bit more about, um, oh, actually, I'm sorry, let's go back to the previous slide. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about travel really quickly. A lot of students ask, what if I am needing to leave uh, the U.S. and and I, you know, I need to go home, I don't want to stay in the U.S. and wait for three months to um, receive my OPT approval, I don't want to I don't have a job lined up yet. I'm not working, so I don't want to pay three extra months of rent if I don't have to. Common question. I totally understand. Um, so when USCIS is um, still making a decision on your case, if your OPT application is still pending, we usually do not recommend travel. We recommend that you stay in the U.S., wait for USCIS to make a decision, um, and receive the EAD card or the employment authorization document so that you have that document which is required to exit and enter the U.S. If you do need to travel um, after you filed for the OPT or you applied for the OPT, you do need to wait until USCIS has made a decision and you will need to coordinate somehow um, to have someone here in the U.S. obtain the EAD card mail it to you um, in whatever location you are outside of the U.S., and you will need that physical card in order to re-enter the U.S. to begin your approved OBT. So you can see that logistically it might be a bit complicated to coordinate all of that. Um, and so think about travel when you are applying for OPT and how this might impact you. Another common question we get is, what happens after August 12th if USCIS still has not approved my application, but my grace period has ended, can I stay in the U.S.? The answer is yes, you may remain in the U.S. if you have already submitted an OPT application and it is pending with U.S. immigration. Um, you can stay in the U.S. You don't have to leave uh, um, on August 12th. You can stay here and wait for USCIS to make that decision. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, during your 12 months of OPT, let's say that you received your full 12 months from July 2nd of 2024 all the way through July 1st of 2025. This is a full 12 months of OPT. Students are required to, to work um, because you're no longer enrolled in classes. The way that you maintain your F1 status during this part of your F1 program while you're on OPT is that you're actively working, you're actively engaged in employment related to your program of study. We do understand that students are applying for jobs. It takes some time to um, you know, apply, onboard, begin a role, and so forth. Students might also decide to apply for multiple jobs and are waiting for decisions and so forth. During your 12-month period, you are permitted up to, but no more than 90 days of unemployment. So let's say on July 2nd, you, you are not yet working um, and you're still interviewing for jobs. You don't start working until, let's say, August 2nd at, the, uh, an, at a company. From July 2nd to August 2nd, you have already accrued 30 of your 90 days of unemployment. During the 12 months, you have an aggregate total of 90 days. So for students who um, need time to transition between jobs or need time to look for a position, sometimes they might be using a lot of those 90 days at the beginning of their OPT or maybe it's scattered throughout, okay? Students who have not exceeded their 90 days of unemployment and remain in, employed um, all through the end of their OPT, so through July 1st of 2025, are provided an additional 60-day grace period after their OPT ends. So we will not talk about what you um, can do during your grace period here, um, but many students 
do do decide to maybe pursue graduate a graduate program or prepare to depart the U.S. Um, or if you are a STEM major, you might begin STEM extension, and and um, there will be a different webinar to talk about that specific option at a later time. So do stay tuned. Um, but you are permitted another 60 day grace period after completion of OPT, um, assuming you have not exceeded your 90 days of unemployment. Next slide, please. Okay, so that is a look at OPT and your timeline. We will have some time for questions, um, but before we go into questions, I want to talk about another common option, which is starting a new program um, or either transferring your I-20 to maybe a different school or changing your degree level here at UC San Diego. Next slide, please. So to determine what action you're going to take, should you transfer your I-20 out or should you change your degree level on your current I-20? Um, first, we're going to ask you, which institution are you attending your new program? So if it's at a new institution, at a U new U U.S. institution in the U.S., then you will take actions to transfer out your CVIS record or your Form I-20 to that new school. If you have been accepted and will begin a higher degree program here at UC San Diego, um, then you will take action and follow steps to update your I-20 and change your degree level. Next slide, please. Eligibility to transfer or start a new program um, is as follows. So first, you need to be maintaining your F1 status. You need to be in good standing. You need to have an active I-20. Um, for students who are not applying for OPT after they've graduated their program, you should be in good standing after you've completed your program. So if you're graduating in spring quarter, uh, make sure that you have an active I-20. You must also start classes within, uh, I'm sorry, you must also start classes at your new program or your higher level at UC San Diego within five months of your program end date. So this is known as the five month rule. Um, I'll illustrate this in the next slide. However, it's important that you think, when is my last date? When is my program end date here? Is it last date of enrollment, on-campus employment, or defense date? And will my new program at my new school start within five months of that date? If so, you are eligible for transfer or changing degree level. In addition, you must request to transfer or change degree level before the end of your 60-day grace period. Okay. A common question we get, um, what happens after my grace period? I am graduating this spring quarter. I have a new program um, at a new institution starting in the, in the fall semester at my new school. What happens during this time? Can I stay in the U.S.? The answer is yes, you may remain in the United States when transferring between schools or transitioning between programs at UC San Diego as long as you will start classes within five months of your program's um, end date. Okay, next slide. If you are requesting to transfer, uh, basic steps to apply, you will need to first receive an, an, an admission letter or an acceptance letter from your new institution. Uh, you also need to choose a transfer release date within your grace period. So if you are um, ending your program on June 14th, within your 60-day grace period, you need to let us know when do you want us to give your new school your, your I-20. This is an electronic transfer. So we basically click a button in the computer on our computers and it sends your I-20 to your new school and then they can then advise you on beginning at your new program. You'll log into iPortal, submit the transfer out request, um, and then we can facilitate that for you within 10 business days. If you are starting a higher degree level here at UC San Diego, similarly, you need to receive an admission letter from your UC San Diego department. You also need to gather financial documents to show you have financial capacity to um, begin your program of study. And then you'll log into iPortal and submit the change of degree level. To Do visit our website, istudents.ucsd.edu, uh, to learn more about either of these processes in detail. Next slide, please. So here we'll illustrate the transfer or change of level um, timeline. 
So we can see for a student who is graduating on June 14th, this is their program end date. They have their 60 day grace period ending on August 12th. They need to determine, will my new program start within five months, which is represented by the teal X there? Will it start within five months? If so, then I will be eligible for transfer or a change of level. For students who are starting a higher degree level here at UC San Diego in the fall quarter, which begins on September 23rd, you can see that that is clearly within these five the five month um, rule or 152 days of June 14th. And so within your grace period, you need to submit the proper application to change degree level or transfer out. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, it is also common for students to actually apply for OPT first, and then after they've applied for OPT, maybe work a few months over the summer, they will end their OPT early and then perhaps start a new program in the fall. That is also possible. Um, in order to be eligible for transfer or changing degree level after, while you are on OPT or after completion of OP OPT, you must be maintaining your status. Um, and you should not have exceeded your 90 days of unemployment while you are on OPT. You must also start classes at your new program within five months of your last date of working while you're on OPT or the end of your OPT, 12-month OPT, whichever is earlier. You must also request a change uh, level or transfer be before the end of your grace period or before any accrual of unemployment days. Okay. Next slide, please. So this is a quick illustration. Let's go ahead and let's click through. So if you are approved for OPT for a full year from July 2nd all the way through July 1st, um, and you decide July 2nd, I'm gonna start working for OPT, great summer internship with Tesla I've got, but I've actually been accepted into a higher degree program, um, let's say at um, NYU, for a start date of September 23rd, then the red X represents when you might want to initiate the application to transfer out your CVS record to NYU by um, submitting a transfer out request in iPortal. So you can see here that um, it is possible to apply for OPT, begin working, but also transfer out um, or apply for a change of degree level to start a new program on September 23rd. Um, you can also, of course, wait all the way until July 1st if you'd like and complete your entire OPT period through next year, next July 2025. You are then given another 60-day grace period through September 1st. And if at that time you would like to begin a new program at a new school, let's go ahead and let's click through. Let's say you have a new program starting next fall, um, sometime around November 1st. We know that November 1st is within five months of when your OPT will end on July of 2025. Let's click through. And so the red X here um, would would indicate when during your 60 degrees period, you might want to apply for either a transfer out or a change of degree level to begin your new program on November 1st. So again, these are general example timelines of when a student might apply for that change of level, um, if they are doing OPT or maybe if they are deciding not to do OPT and jumping straight into a new program. Next slide, please. So I think this is the end of our timeline presentation. I'd love to open up um, the floor for any questions. Uh, you can feel free to just use the, the Q&A feature um, or Argeria, if there are any questions that were provided already that we can highlight, I'd love to discuss that here. Um, yeah, I think, um, I think one that may be relevant was just a question mm -hmm. if a student will graduate in the summer. Um, yes. Fall quarter, or sorry, that spring quarter. They, they will graduate in the, would you repeat that, Argeria? They will graduate in the Yes, if summer? they graduate in the summer, yes. Yes, if, so it, and is there a defense date in mind or an on, anything else to consider? Or la, last term of enrollment will be summer? 
it sounded like from the question, the last term of enrollment. Uh -huh. Okay. So if your last term of enrollment will be in summer, let's say you're enrolling in a class in summer session two, the same timeline will apply. The end of summer session two, um, I don't have that date exactly. Um, I don't remember that date at the top of my head right now, but I think it's sometime around August or oh, I'm sorry, September, early September, I want to say, um, then your grace period will begin the day after the last date of enrollment in summer session two, for example. So the same grace period timeline applies. It will just shift depending on when your program end date is, right? Depending on last date of enrollment in your program, last date of on-campus employment, or comprehensive exam date. That can be in the summer. That can even be this coming fall. Um, again, apply the the same concept we've discussed here in our earlier slides to understand when does your grace period begin um, so that you know when to either apply for OPT, when is your five-month window, or when do you need to transfer out within your grace period to a new school or change degree level. Great question, Argeria. Any other questions? Um, nothing yet has come in, uh, but feel free to send your questions over to us in the chat or in the Q&A feature. I know that many of you might have very detailed questions about your um, specific timeline. <clears throat> you can visit icontact.ucsc.edu and um, meet with one of our international student advisors and we can really discuss with you um, your specific timeline and if there's anything else you had questions about if you don't have any specific questions during today's session. Um, and yes, I will definitely be providing a recording of, of this presentation as well as the PowerPoint slides for everyone to reference. Okay. Kyati, it looks like you have a question um, in the chat or in the Q&A feature. So your program ends on June 14th, but your, your last date of on-campus employment is June 27th. So that's very typical. Um, your program end date would then be June 27th, assuming you don't have a comprehensive exam or or defense date past June 27th, right? So your grace period would likely begin on June 28th um, and then to go on for 60 days. So you would follow the timelines that we discussed today to determine next steps. Okay, we will be posting the webinar um, via our, our website. And so um, you will provide that link to attendees as well once it's available. Kiati, a great question. When can you apply for the STEM OPT extension? Uh, we didn't go over STEM OPT extensions today. However, you are required to apply for the STEM extension before the end of your 12 months of OPT. So in the example we provided in today's presentation, if your OPT goes from July 2nd of 2024 through July 1st of 2025, the deadline to apply for the STEM extension would be July 1st of 2025. And you can apply as early as 90 days prior to July 1st of 2025, uh, but no later than the end of your OPT. Really great questions today. Thank you. Kiati, um, for STEM OPT, do you need anything from your employer? Yes, the application process is, a, is quite different from the first 12 months of OPT. Um, our website, stemopt.ucsd.edu, does have a very thorough guide on, on the details and steps and stages um, for applying for, for the STEM extension. I do encourage you to review our website, um, which has which has more detail. And if you have any additional questions after reviewing that, please do connect with our advisors and we can help walk you through any other questions you might have. Sure.
Okay, it looks like many of the questions um, have already been answered or we've reviewed them during the presentation. So if there are no further questions, I am, I'm able to end this webinar a bit early. I do thank you all for attending. If you have any questions, we encourage you to um, think about the content that we provided today, um, connect with our advisors. Your timelines might change between now and the time that you graduate. So if things do come up, um, please connect with us. We're happy to walk you through your individual timeline um, and support you as you complete your program at UC San Diego. Um, and pursue next steps. For those of you graduating in spring quarter, I'd like to wish you all um, the best of luck in your final weeks of the spring quarter um, and final exams if you have any, and best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you all. Take good care.